Hello world, today it is Monday, September 19th, 2011. Hope everybody's having a great week so far, and today is going. I'm doing my review of Tales from the Tales of Earthsea movie. So, for you guys who don't know, Tales from Earthsea is one of the few Studio Ghibli films not directed by beloved director Hayao Miyazaki. Uh, Studio Ghibli is the film studio created by Hayao Miyazaki. Uh, and the film and his fa most famous films are like My Neighbor Totoro, Kiki's Delivery Service, Spirited Away, Princess Mononoke, House Moving Castle, Ponyo. These are all classic Miyazaki films. Tales from Earthsea is not directed by Hayao Miyazaki, instead directed by his son Goro Miyazaki. Tales from Earthsea is based off a collect uh, uh, the Earthsea Chronicles by novelist Ursula K. Le Guin. Tales from Earthsea, the movie, tells the story of a disgraced prince named Aden and his quest for redemption. After murdering his own father, the king, Aden flees and eventually meets a powerful sorcerer named Sparrowhawk. Sparrowhawk is on a mission to restore balance to Earthsea, which, as a result of its imbalance, has been facing several deadly plagues. Aden, on the other hand, is, a more per is on a more personal quest for redemption and trying to conflict and reconcile the more darker side of his nature. Now, here's what's good about Tales from Earthsea. Tales of Earthsea has really stunning animation. I mean, this is a Studio Ghibli film. Even though it's not directed by Hayao Miyazaki, uh, it still brings that top-notch quality animation, and it's still a very visually appealing and wonder to watch, and very appealing to the eye. One thing that's also really good about Tales of Earthsea is that it's much darker than most Studio Ghibli films. Uh, which are usually more directed towards children. The film covers themes like abandonment, abuse, slavery, death, despair, and fear. These are pretty tough themes for a child to swallow, maybe ta a tad bit too intense for younger kids. However, kids who are usually 8 to 10 years old and up should be able to be fine with the film and its themes. Um, and, you know, the darkness of it is really like, I, I enjoy dark movies and this is, you know, this is really good, and it's not, and it's been, it's rated appropriately, so don't worry about that. Now, here's what's really not that good about Tales from Earthsea. There's really no sense of wonder or amazement or magic or wow. Uh, see, because what makes films, the Studio Ghibli films directed by Hayao Miyazaki, so mesmerizing, no matter how dark they get. If you guys remember, Princess Mononoke was actually a fairly dark, very serious movie. There's still a sense of wonder and amazement and innocence and a sense of magic to it, and. This film is kind of severely lacking in that, and I think that's part of the fact is that Hayao, it doesn't have really have Hayao Miyazaki's personal touch. While it's directed by his son, it just still doesn't have that same touch. Hayao Miyazaki has this sort of touch, has this sense of wonder and amazement, has this sort of like magic touch that adds that themes into there, and it's not really felt here, and it feels like his presence is sorely missed. Another thing that's really kind of not good about the movie is the plot holes. There are several plot elements that the movie discusses for a brief amount of time then abandons them altogether or never really fully explains them or brings them to a close. It leaves a lot of unanswered questions about after the movie was done, and since... And I really don't feel like this is going to be a sequel to this movie anytime soon. Um... Another thing that's really kind of disappointing about this movie is the voice work. Usually Miyazaki films usually bring A-list talent when they're making... A-list Hollywood talent when they are making the film. If you guys remember for, like, Howl's Moving Castle, they had Christian Bale doing the voice of Howl. Um, however, here, that's not really the case. The only person that really stands out as doing a fantastic job is Timothy Dalton, who does the voice of Sparrowhawk. Then, granted... Timothy Dalton does is amazing in everything he does. I feel like he's a truly underrated actor. Um, the rest of the voice cast, I, it's kind of mixed about it. I think, for me, just Timothy Dalton really is the only one who stands out there. Um, general consensus of the film, if I had to sum it up entirely, the film does boast really stunning animation and a much darker storyline. But it kind of lacks the same magical touch of Hayao Miyazaki, and his presence is surely missed in this film. Um... That's pretty much all I have to say for the movie. I mean, it's it's still a good movie. It's still a good, enjoyable, watchable movie. And if you enjoy Studio Ghibli films, Hayao Miyazaki films, or just anime in general, give it a try. I wasn't personally... Not that I wasn't personally fond of the movie. Um, I liked it, but it really wasn't the best from Studio Ghibli. Um, if you want to give it a try, go ahead. If you guys want... Uh, 
you've seen the movie, leave some comments down below. Tell me what you think. And also, what is your... I want to ask the question, pose the question out there. What is your favorite Studio Ghibli or favorite Hayao Miyazaki movie? Uh, leave your... Again, leave those comments down below if you want to include all that in your comments. That would be greatly appreciated and awesome. And uh, that's pretty much it for today. Again, I don't know what my list for this week is going to be. But once I do, I will make sure to let you know as soon as possible. Alright, I'll talk to you guys later then. Peace.